Okay, so get this. We're diving into this idea, and it's a bit out there, that the stuff of stars, you know, mm-hmm. plasma, might actually be the, like, hidden language of our own minds and bodies. And you sent over this whole stack of research and ancient texts. It's kind of amazing. It is a fascinating mix. Really speaks to how everything's connected. You know, we've got physics, ancient wisdom, even like hints of memetics in here. There are definitely connections to be found. No, totally. When I saw this, I was like, okay, this is either brilliant or we've gone totally off the rails. But the more I read, the more it all kind of started clicking. So for our listeners who... um, haven't exactly gone to plasma physics school. Could you break down what plasma even is? You know how everyone learns about those three states of matter, right? Solid, liquid, gas. Yeah, back in high school science class. Yeah, Right. Well, plasma, a lot of people call it the fourth state. It's basically what you get when you crank up the heat on a gas so high that those atoms start going nuts. The electrons are like, see, yeah, and you end up with this like supercharged particle soup. That's plasma. So kind of like what happens when you see lightning. Exactly. Lightning is a perfect example of plasma doing its thing here on Earth. But here's the mind-blowing part. Plasma isn't some rare thing. A whopping 99% of the visible universe is made of it. We're talking stars, nebulas, even the vast spaces between galaxies. It's all plasma. So we're talking like fundamental building blocks of the cosmos here. But how do we even start to connect that? To what's happening inside our heads. Well, some scientists are starting to think that our brains actually function like plasmas. Hold on. You're saying my brain is like a tiny star. <laughs> I mean, I knew I was bright, but this is next level. It's a bold claim for sure, but there's growing evidence. Think about those electrical patterns we see on EEGs, you know, brain waves. Some researchers are saying those aren't just simple electrical signals. They might be tiny auroras happening right there inside our skulls. And what creates auroras the movement of charged particles plasma. So instead of just electrical impulses, we're talking about a whole dynamic system of plasma energy, like swirling around in our brains. That is wild. It really is. And it gets even more interesting. There are researchers who believe our brains are using not just electrical and plasma energy, but light energy too. They call it a quantum plasma brain. And it's a pretty mind bending concept. Okay, I admit it. This is where I started to feel like I fell into a science fiction novel, but let's roll with it. One of the papers you had me look at talked about mapping colors, like CMYK, the color model, onto different states of plasma. What does that even mean? This is where that ancient Chinese system, the I Ching, comes in. You've probably heard of it. It's all about the flow of energy, how different forces interact. Well, in this system, you take colors like cyan, magenta, yellow, and you assign them to different energetic qualities. So cyan, for example, represents shen, which is spiritual energy. Magenta gets linked to qi, your life force energy. And then yellow is connected to jing, which is more about your physical essence. So it's like a color-coded language for the different types of energy we have within us. Exactly. And each of these CMYK colors then gets linked to a specific state of plasma. So like weak plasma, which is very calm, nurturing, might be associated with one color, while strong plasma, which is more about intense change that gets linked to another color and so on. Okay, so we've got plasma, colors, ancient I Ching. You're going to tell me this connects to the actual organs in our body now, aren't you? You're way ahead of me. This is where traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, comes in. One of the sources focused on what they call the six curious organs in TCM. We're talking the uterus, brain, marrow, bones, vessels, and you ready for it? The gallbladder. Wait, the gallbladder? I thought that was just for, like, digesting lunch. It does do that. But in TCM, each organ has an energetic function, too. And with this system, each of these curious organs gets linked to a specific plasma state and its corresponding CMYK color, like they're acting as energy centers within us. For example, they link the gallbladder to thermal plasma, the hottest, most energetic state, and that's associated with decision-making courage. You know, that is weirdly accurate. When you think about it, if you have to make a tough decision, You often feel that kind of heat, that fire in your belly, right? Like your gallbladder saying, all right, let's do this. It's an interesting connection, right? And it's not just the gallbladder. They link the brain to relativistic plasma, which involves particles moving crazy fast, reflects the brain's whole deal, processing everything so quickly. Each organ gets mapped in a way that suggests it has this unique plasma signature. Okay, this is blowing my mind. So basically, we're walking around with all these mini plasma reactors inside of us, each organ humming with its own particular energy. 
this is way more interesting than my anatomy class back in college, I gotta say. It is a pretty amazing concept. And what's even wilder is all of it circles right back to the Aching. Like this language of energy flow within us, people have been onto it for thousands of years. Okay, so how do we actually make sense of all this? It's all incredibly cool, but can we use this in our lives or is this just a giant cosmic thought experiment? Well, this is where that Lu Xu square comes in. It's this three by three magic square that's been used in Chinese numerology and Feng Shui for ages. Think of it like a visual map of those plasma states and how they might be playing out in different parts of your life, career, relationships, health, you name it. So like a cosmic personality test, but instead of your sun sign, you've got plasma states. Oh, I am SO here for this. <laughs> All right, so we've got this cosmic personality test, this low shoe square. How do we actually use it? Is there like a plasma horoscope I need to look up? Not a horoscope exactly, but you're on the right track. So you can actually figure out your own like personal low shoe number. It's based on your birth date. Yeah. And where that number lands on the grid, that tells you which of those plasma states are like the most prominent in your own energy field. Okay, that's cool. But I'm still trying to wrap my head around how these plasma states actually you know, show up in our lives. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. is my liver over here secretly judging my career choices based on his plasma vibes or something? Well, that's where this other concept comes in, Bagua. You might have heard of it. It's a big deal in Feng Shui. Yeah, isn't that all about arranging your furniture and stuff to, like, improve the energy flow in your house? Are you saying my couch is messing with my plasma? Well, Feng Shui is all about harmonizing energy. And Bagua, it's like a map for that. It takes any space, could be your house, but also your body, even your life path, and it divides it into these eight areas. Career, relationships, wealth, health, they all have their own section on the Bagua map. Okay, so if the Lushu square is telling me about, like, MY dominant plasma energies, then Bagua shows me where those energies are actually playing out in my life. Exactly, and it gets even cooler. Each area on the Bagua map, it's not just linked to a plasma state, it's also connected to one of those trigrams from the I Ching A and D, a color from that CMYK model we were talking about. Whoa, so it's like a multi-layered map of your life connecting like ancient wisdom, energy systems, even colors. Okay, give me an example. Let's say my Lushu number puts me strong in the north area of the Bagua. What does that even mean? Okay, so the north, that's traditionally associated with like your career, your life purpose, how you move through the world. And you know what plasma state they link to the north? Relativistic plasma. No way, the super fast high energy one, the one that's also connected to the brain. Exactly. So if you've got a strong north energy, it could mean you're kind of naturally drawn to problem solving, making quick decisions, maybe even thinking a bit differently than everyone else. You might feel the most energized, you know, really alive when you're tackling challenges, going after what you want. Okay, that is weirdly accurate. I've never been one to back down from a challenge, that's for sure. But what about someone who's feeling stuck in that area of life, like their north energy is zapped, their career's going nowhere? What can they even deal about that? That's where really understanding these connections can be so helpful. So if you're feeling stuck career-wise, knowing that north is also connected to the water element and that program can, which is about deep wisdom and resourcefulness, that can give you some clues. So instead of just being like, ugh, my career is a mess, you can be like, my can energy needs a boost, mm -hmm. like leveling up in a video game, but for your actual life. Exactly. And then you can start looking into practices or activities that resonate with that water energy, those qualities of can. Mm. Maybe that's meditation to tap into your intuition. Maybe it's finding a mentor who can guide you. I love that. Okay. But we can't forget about those other um, intriguing terms you threw out there earlier Biotensegrity, shintegrity, sounded like something straight out of my physics textbook. Well, they do come from physics, but they're really about understanding how systems, you know, hold themselves together, how they stay balanced. Biotensegrity, that's the idea that the way living organisms like us maintain their structure, it all comes down to a balance between tension and compression forces. And these mm -hmm. forces are happening throughout the entire structure. So it's not just about our bones and muscles holding us up, but this, like interplay of forces happening all throughout our bodies like our bodies are these perfectly engineered systems exactly and what's really interesting is that one of the sources you sent it suggested this principle of biotensegrity it might even be connected to gravity and relativity whoa hold on are you saying there's a link between the way our bodies hold themselves together and the forces that like 
govern the entire universe. It's a pretty mind-blowing idea, right? It suggests that this interconnectedness, it's happening at every single level of existence. And it actually ties into that other term, that shintegrity. Okay, break down the shintegrity thing for me one more time. So it's combining shen, which in traditional Chinese medicine, it refers to spirit, consciousness, and then tensegrity. So shintegrity, it's basically saying that our consciousness, that sense of self we have, it's also held together by this balance of tension and compression forces. So instead of physical structures, we're talking about the forces that are shaping our thoughts, our emotions, like our very being. Exactly. It suggests our consciousness isn't just this like formless blob. It's got structure, it's got integrity, and it's constantly interacting with the forces all around it. Okay, I like it. Okay, but and I have to ask about this. You mentioned earlier that shintegrity might even be connected to einstein rosen bridges. You know those things, wormholes. Yeah. Are you seriously suggesting our consciousness can travel through wormholes? It's definitely an out there idea, right? But yeah. one of your sources did make that connection. And it's actually not as crazy as it might sound at first. Okay, now you've got me intrigued. But before we get lost in the wormhole, let's bring it back to this shintegrity concept for a sec. How do we actually like cultivate more of that in our lives? Well, a lot of ancient practices, things like meditation, kagong, tai chi, they're all about cultivating and harmonizing your shen, your life force energy. And some people believe these practices are actually strengthening our integrity, making our consciousness more resilient, more adaptable. So it's like we're fine tuning our own personal force fields, making them strong enough to handle whatever life throws our way and maybe even sneak a peek into other dimensions. You got it. And who knows, maybe by strengthening our own shintegrity, we're also contributing to a greater collective shintegrity, creating a more harmonious and interconnected world. It's a beautiful thought, isn't it? It really is. And it makes you wonder, what other mind-blowing connections are still out there, just waiting to be discovered? But we're going to have to save that for another deep dive for now. Keep those brains buzzing, and we'll catch you next time. Okay, back again and ready to jump into that wormhole. We were talking about shintegrity, how it's like our consciousness has its own structure, you know, like a force field for your thoughts and feelings. And you were saying that might be connected to wormholes, those shortcuts through space time. You're gonna have to explain this one to me like I'm five because my brain's still trying to catch up. I hear ya. Wormholes, they're one of those things, even when you study physics, you're like, wait, seriously? So think about this. You've got a piece of paper, fold it in half, now poke a hole right through. That hole, that's basically your wormhole connecting two points on that paper that are like really far apart. Okay, yeah, I get that. Right, so now imagine that paper, it's not paper, it's the fabric of space-time itself. And that hole, it could connect different parts of the universe, maybe even different dimensions. Okay, that visual helps. Yeah. But we're not talking about like building spaceships to fly through these things. We're talking about consciousness, right? Exactly. Some of those sources you sent over they were suggesting that consciousness itself might be able to like interact with wormholes, maybe even travel through them. You're saying my consciousness could be out there right now taking a joyride through a wormhole while I'm sitting here. Well, maybe not a joyride exactly, but the idea is our consciousness might not have to play by the same rules as our physical bodies. It could be out there accessing information, having experiences in realms we can't even really imagine. Okay, let's say... Like, hypothetically, my consciousness, is dipping a toe into other dimensions. What would that even feel like? Would I get superpowers? Maybe a killer recipe for apple pie. That is the million-dollar question. I mean, we're really just speculating here. But yeah. think about those moments when you have a sudden insight, like pure intuition out of nowhere. Some people connect that to this kind of interdimensional access, like your consciousness picked up a signal from somewhere else. That actually makes a lot of sense. It's like when you're wrestling with a problem and the answer just P.O.P.S. into your head. Maybe it wasn't nowhere after all. Right. And it connects to this whole idea of collective consciousness, too. If our individual consciousnesses can tap into other dimensions, maybe we're all connected in ways we don't even fully grasp, like okay. a huge web of shared experiences, knowledge, all that. It's like that Star Wars thing where Obi-Wan tells Luke, the Force, it surrounds us, penetrates us, binds the galaxy together. Except instead of the Force, we've got all these plasma brains linked up through wormholes. That's a pretty epic way to think about it. And who knows, maybe it's not so far-fetched. The more we learn about the universe, the more we realize just how much we don't know. There's so much more to explore. All right, so got to ask, as we're wrapping up this deep dive, where do we go from here? What are we supposed to do with all of this mind-blowing information? 
You know, for me, the biggest takeaway is just that sense of wonder, of possibility. We might not have all the answers about plasma brains, wormholes, what consciousness really is, but just thinking about these ideas can totally change how we see ourselves and everything around us. It's like upgrading from a basic map to a GPS, but this GPS shows you like infinite destinations. We've gone from, I have a brain to, my brain might be a plasma powered wormhole traveler. That's a serious upgrade. Exactly. So keep exploring, stay curious. Who knows what amazing insights are out there just waiting for you to find them. Love it. And on that note, we'll leave everyone with one final thought to ponder. If your consciousness could travel anywhere, any wormhole, any dimension, where would you go? What would you be seeking? Until next time, folks, keep those plasma brains firing.